sponsored by Tech Time Radio. Visit them online at techtimeradio.com. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever heard of Turbo Debt? No, what is that? Something to get me into debt faster? No, Turbo Debt is not to get you in debt faster. It's to help you get out of debt. Do you have over $10,000 in credit card, personal loans, medical, or payday loans? Of course I have debt. That's the American way. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Turbo Debt will give you the option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. Over 70% of Americans die with credit card debt. Do not let this happen to you. Turbo Debt will give you an option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. If you have over 10,000 in credit card debt and personal loans, medical or payday loans, they can help. Go to turbodebt.com forward slash tech time. Again, that's turbodebt.com forward slash tech time, all capitalized for a free consultation today. Turbo Debt is a proud sponsor of this week's episode of Tech Time Radio. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm. Technology News of the Week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. Each week, our show covers the weekly top technology subjects without a political agenda. We verify the facts. And we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And, of course, with a little whiskey on the side. We are live streaming during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, slash X, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit us online at TechTimeRadio.com and become a Patreon supporter at Patreon.com forward slash TechTimeRadio. I'm Nathan Mum, your host, a technologist with over 30 years of technology expertise working for Fortune 500 companies across the country. Today in studio, we have, of course, our co-host, Mike Gorday. Mike's an award-winning author, originally from Arizona. Mike's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike is here to keep me from geeking out while providing insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We are friends from different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show. Today on Tech Time with Nathan Mum, we have a lot of exciting topics to discuss. In our AI segment, we're continuing our discussion from last week. This week, we're going to be talking about how artificial intelligence has become so advanced that it can now mimic people's physical looks with great accuracy. This has led to some problems, which we're going to be discussing in detail. And in other news, the Beatles' last song, Now and Then, was recently finished using AI technology. The song features all four members of the band and is a genuine Beatles recording. It's quite emotional, said Paul McCartney, who describes it as, quote, like John was there. Audiobooks are a hot asset, and Spotify is making a run at being the leader. We're going to be discussing the rise of audiobooks and how Spotify is trying to dominate the market. And if you're looking to add a sound bar or sound system to your TV this holiday, we have a nugget that will help you understand the lingo. We'll be discussing the different types of sound systems available and which one is right for you. And of course, on our Meg segment, we have Gwen Wei, who takes us on a holiday venture into our gadgets and gear segment that will make us all feel very thankful. All right. As always, we have our pick of the day whiskey tasting during the commercials to see if our selected whiskey pick gets zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right, in story number one, we have new tools that are gonna make it easier for the public and users to detect deep fakes and some difficulty for AI systems that are creating them. Let's go to our Tech Time Tom Geiken for more on the story. When Scarlett Johansson found out her voice and face had been used to promote an artificial intelligence app online without her consent, 
the actor took legal action against the app maker, Lisa AI. Artificial intelligence has gotten so good at mimicking people's physical looks and voices that it can be hard to tell if they're real or fake. This has become a particular problem for celebrities for whom trying to stay ahead of the AI bots has become a game of whack-a-mole. Many such deep fakes can float around the internet for weeks, such as a recent one featuring Mr. Beast, in which an unauthorized likeness of the social media personality can be seen hawking $2 iPhones. What can be done about this? This week's show has a few new tools to combat AI. Back to you in the studio. All right, so we got, we got, we're got we talking about, we, we talked about we this talked last about week. We talked about this last week. With Phil. So uh, for those that. For weeks on end. <laughs> weeks on end. But now there's actually tools. And we talked about this when ChatGPT first came on out. There were kids that were using it to write essays for school. And then this, this company came on out with a kind of AI tester for documentation. Yeah, it's a. It's a it's a software program to detect if you're doing AI generated. Guess what? We have two we're going to be talking about to, today. We have one that's called Generative AI. Ning Zing, an assistant professor of computer science and engineering at Washington University in St. Louis, says that AI is being misused and he's actually created a way to have it combat against other AI tools called anti fake. That's his application. It scrambles the signal th such that it prevents the AI-based synthesizing engine from generating an effective copycat. Essentially, Antifake was inspired by the universities of Chicago's a similar tool aimed at protecting visual artists from having their work scraped during AI models. This research, though, is still very new. The team is presenting the project later this month at a major security conference in Denmark. It's not currently clear how it will scale, though. But the essence of this is before publishing a video online, you would upload the voice track to the anti-fake platform, which can be used as a standalone app or access via the web. And then the anti-fake scrambles the audio signal so that it confuses AI models. The modified track will still sound normal to the human ear, but it'll sound messed up for systems that import it, creating an unclean cloned version of this. So, so you have to you have to use this as part of your process now you, to it's not something that can go in and just do that on audio files that are already online correct so the the tool uh, anti-fake that they're talking about is this application let's say me and you decide that we're going to release an album right because we're, we're great singers right so we're going to be doing sure. a a blues album i guess what we would do is we, we would send <laughs> yeah, I can this see that happening can you see that happening all right so essentially i'd take this song that we'd have these lyrics I have, us in the video that would be singing and dancing and, and doing everything. And what it do is it, it adds a security layer to the actual data itself so that if you're watching it as a human, and he says that we won't be able to detect the screeches or the items that will be there, it'll be playing normal. But any AI system and the way that it goes through the algorithm on how it would actually use to replicate it would essentially make it unusable as media. Okay, well, that's great. But like I said, you have to have this available to you. So let, we're using stuff right now that it has that doesn't have this attached to it. We're uploading our voices onto the Internet. Uh, even after we were to start using this, couldn't the AI just come along and use these models? So, in person. So we're, yeah, we're going to talk about the other application called deep fake detection. But before we go there, uh -huh. okay. So, so there's two applications that we're going to uh -huh. talk about. But this application, so what's going to happen is it's always kind of this chicken and egg syndrome where someone will come on out with an anti protection yeah, this, process, yeah, and then you is, have someone that's going to try to crack it, uh -huh. and then once they get yeah, it cracked, this, and the person will. This is as old as time itself. This is the beginning of how McAfee made all of his fortunes with antivirus, and then producing the viruses, and then antivirus, and then producing viruses. This it's, is it's just an the, arms race. This is this is exactly what's been going on throughout human history forever. It, it, well, we're going to be talking I a got, lot about that. I got a chariot. <laughs> That's oh, a, crap. I need to do something about that. Uh, I have this. All right. The second software is called Deep Fake Detection. Um, deep Fake Detection essentially uses um, digital watermarks. So we're all familiar with watermarks, right? And sometimes if you have a watermark, something you sometimes see in the bottom right-hand corner of a movie that maybe you, you downloaded off the Internet that says a property of something, something. something. Or, or or something to use so that anybody <laughs> knows that you duplicate it's something. It's funny how we're using watermark as something this Internet uh, okay. uh, 
Well, so so generative here. Essentially, this software uh, uses a gap where it actually goes through and it tries to determine things on social media and other areas that have been posted. So this is one that's already been posted. And what it does is it goes through and it takes a look at misused and abused artifacts. So when you do a deep fake, they're, they're trying to be very, very simple in, in what's going on. And so when you look really, really closely, if you zoom in most of the time at your neck models, uh, you'll see pixelation in there that is abnormal to your actual neck if you would zoom into it. So what this software does is it goes through and essentially looks for anything that would have these artifacts and digital watermarks that would be there saying, guess what? We know that it's fake itself. Okay, so th this, is this for images or is this for also sound files and everything? So else? this is really for video files, so the okay. deep fake, the deep fake detection. And, and essentially it's being used now by Meta has purchased a licensing for that. Of course they uh, have. Google has purchased some. So there was some of these on line major um, competitors out there in the AI race are purchasing this so that essentially if you're posting a video on YouTube or on Facebook that they can use this simpler software to take a look and see if it's just instantly uh, deep faked by uh, Joe Blow in his basement or if it's actually someone that spent a lot of time to, to try to make it look there. Did you also know the U.S. Senate announced that they will be discussing a new bipartisan bill for essentially the act to keep entertainment safe of 2023. Essentially, this is a new bill that will provide a uniformed federal law that currently looks at the rights of people's properties of once they have passed away and identities that are being used for commercial promotion without their consent. So essentially, this is the Hollywood Actors uh, Guild has helped with this. Many other really the kind of high profile individuals have helped this bill go into place and they're uh, in the process of looking to have a bill that if someone does deep fake and all good of a sudden... Good to know that we have all these popular people around to to fight the good fight for all of all so, the people that don't got that. All, all the celebrities are, are what's helping keep this deep fake in the chat there. Yeah, how about that? There you go. All right, so those are two applications that are kind of out there to make you not have to worry about AI as much. Now, if you see Mr. Beast on a TikTok or YouTube saying that he's going to give you an iPhone 15 for $2, common sense should be that you're not going to believe that that's really Mr. Beast. Yeah, common sense doesn't exist. That's, okay. that's, that's a thing that we, we rely on, but yeah. it's really not applicable to human behavior. Okay. All right. Well, let's yeah. move on to story number two. This is an AI story that will make a lot of people sing. Uh, okay. Well, right? Well, maybe. Okay. I don't know. All right. So- uh, several months has it been that has it been it's been like a a year or more I think we did a we did a story on an AI that completed a Beatles song that was about two years ago about two years that was about two years ago we did it in studio a couple weeks before it main yep mainstream news so we've got another one okay and it's the Beatles again all right and we've got another AI that's finishing the Beatles last song called Now and Then okay all right uh this week. Yep. The Beatles finally released their hotly anticipated last song, and as many fans speculated, the record is completed version of John Lennon's love song called Now and Then. Paul McCartney first teased the song release uh, this June on BBC Radio 4. The record has a long history, which includes a demo recorded by Lennon in the late 70s in his re residence at the Dakota in New York. As producer Giles Martin explains, a big part of why Now and Then has been in production limbo for so long is due to the poor quality of the cassette tape on which he originally recorded. Okay. The very original recording is just him playing the piano with the TV in the background. That's part of this technology that they use. They can now extract, extract John from the piano and from the television. Okay. Essentially, what the machine learning does is it recognizes someone's voice so if you and I have a conversation and we're in a crowded room and there's a piano playing in the background, we can teach the AI what the sound of your voice, the sound of my voice, and it can extract those voices. And that is how the AI is used now and then. And it's similar to the demixing process uh, Peter Jackson's team used to make the Beatles get back, which we reported on two years ago. Yep. Uh, in addition to isolating Lennon's vocals, Martin and McCartney added a new string arrangement. Lynn worked on 
uh, George Harrison's guitar part, and Ringo Starr re-recorded the drums on Now and Then. Martin says he's well aware of the skepticism expressed by Beatles purists, as well as the ethical questions raised by the use of AI in music. He says its use in this case brings out a new vibrancy to the band's former recordings. It was important that the changes we made were authentic, Paul said. You know, we need to follow George's rhythm, and it was really interesting how he worked. It was like we need to concentrate on the Beatles and what they're doing like they're in the room, Martin said. That was the magic of it. Comes from the heart and from the right place, and Paul's desire to collaborate with John, even though he can't. Even the song itself is almost John's love letter to Paul in a way. Now and then, I miss you. That's how it was felt, and it felt incredibly special doing it. All right, so so if if you're a Beatles fan, I, I like Beatles music. I wouldn't consider myself a fan, though. I, I just like listening to some of their music. If you're a purist. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, I guess. Okay, there you go. So if you're a purist, are you excited about this album, or you're like, oh, I don't know? Because what they did is they essentially had somebody do a track of drums, which is easy to overlay on top the, of other music. I don't know that you can call this a purist versus a uh, a technology person because okay. we're using the technology here to extract the original versions and putting them in together. So they're, you know, we, we all know that the Beatles can't perform. So, you know, if you have somebody out there that, that doesn't like the song, that could be not necessarily a Beatles purist, but somebody who doesn't like technology very much. Okay. That's a, that's a good way to take a look at it. All right. Well, that is kind of exciting. You know, they've always been able to lay tracks. For a long time, you've been able to lay tracks. But the problem was, was this tape had television in the background, some talking in the background. So they isolated and removed all of that, got it to this pure form and created it. That's, that's, that's pretty, that's, that is yeah, exciting but for you. You know, there's still ethical issues that go along with that. There is. All right. Story number three. Audiobooks are a hot asset and Spotify is making a run to become the leader. Let's go to Kyren. Lad for more on the story. Audiobook lovers across the U.S. rejoice. As of last week, Spotify premium users in the U.S. join those in the U.K. and Australia as they make over 200,000 audiobooks available as part of Spotify premium subscriptions. You'll simply start seeing audiobooks marked as included in premium that you can hit play on right away. Now considered the largest audiobook catalog online, including over 70% of best-selling titles over the last 10 years. Audible users from Amazon, watch out as Spotify is growing at a rapid pace. All right, so this is kind of an interesting deal. Have you ever listened to an audio book on tape? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever listened to an audio book on Audible? That's is the largest, well, it was one of the largest. It was the largest. It was the largest Audible book collection on Amazon. I, I did I did when I was able to listen to it for a reduced price than what it is now. Okay. So what if I told you? It was pretty expensive. It was, uh, it was pretty. It was pretty. Let me tell you right now, Spotify Premium, which is kind of Spotify's. Spotify you know, Plus. Yeah, Spotify Plus is essentially taking head-to-head competition against the audio book Leader And during this report, I found out some really interesting information regarding how many people are listening to audiobooks that blew me out of the mind. I am not a big audiobook listener. And when I grew up, I still had a big book person. Well, I I love magazines, but those aren't books. I get it. So, so I, I, (laughs) yeah, those are a lot of pictures. So, so so essentially, (laughs) audiobooks is becoming the new entertainment uh, selection for listen to this. On a consumer survey of over 10,000 younger Americans showed that the younger generations are taken to audiobook listening. Gen Z and millennials lead in audiobook listening overall. With 72% of the 18 to 34-year-old demographic reporting, they listen to audiobooks daily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Daily. Yeah. Uh, I listen to the audiobook... Uh, quarterly, but yeah, but I think you listen to an audio <laughs> audiobook every twenty five years or so. No, 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 a little bit better than that. But I did not understand how many people are listening to it. Essentially, in this report, it says that the, again the eighteen to thirty four demographic, which seventy two percent listen daily, sixty three percent listen to it to relax, 
51 uh, percent are the top emotional associated audiobook listening items that get listened to each and every day. So relaxation is the largest part of doing it. And audiobooks specifically that are associated with relaxation are 51 percent of the top books selected to listen to. Okay. All right. Did, Odie, do you listen to audiobooks? To well, I was going to say that my generation, because it, it's my generation. It's your generation. Right? Yep. Yeah. My generation doesn't really have the time to like. Sit down and read a book. No, I would you don't. Say. You don't have not. You don't have not the time. You have not the patience. No, I don't think it's not the patience. Because I don't know. <laughs> okay. My friend who works at the airport, all she she has to sit an hour in traffic. Yeah. And music doesn't always cut it. She'll use that time to listen to audiobooks or podcasts. Okay. As something to do, like multitask while she's wasting that time driving. Because she can't be reading a book while driving. Did you you know, know, well, just, you can. It's just not. Well, I would recommend it. I, I used to read books while I was in L.A. Do you know the majority <laughs> of fast food restaurants now allow you to have an earbud in while you're working on a drive through Yeah. And listen to audiobooks. Not to music, but if you have you an audio so books, inundated with input that, yeah, I mean, that's it's crazy. I just pulled up to Burger King uh, last week or a week before or whatever. I don't want to maybe a couple days ago. Uh, and as you pulled on in. She had, again, an iPod in her ear, and she was doing this, and I was getting ready and said, are you guys allowed, as being nice to her, are you allowed to listen to music? She said, no, we can't listen to music or anything, but we can listen to any books. I was like, dang, okay. So that is a, a, a big area, and Spotify wants to be, the right. They're, they're already number two. With this new yeah. deal, they're now number two on the list, and they are immediately going for- I, You know, that's that's interesting, but I, I think I think it's interesting in a different way for me because with an audio book, you're not really paying attention. You just have this kind of a droning voice going on, and you're doing other tasks. Okay, Whereas, so you don't you don't think they comprehend I, as much? I, I don't think I don't think there is as much comprehension with listening to audio, especially if you're doing other things. Okay, because uh, you can't really comprehend something. You have to concentrate on when you're reading a book. You have to concentrate on the topic. There you go. All right, well, that ends our top technology stories of the week. Moving on, we have Gwen Wei joining us for our Gadgets and Gear segment after the commercial break. You will not want to miss this segment. You're listening to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. See you after the break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. Time. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Tech Time is a weekly technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Day. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break. And now let me tell you what we are sipping and our pick of the day. During the show today, we have chosen the John J. Bowman Single Barrel, 100 proof, $55. Now, from the Bowman's website, it says, Our John J. Bowman Bourbon. Uh, celebrates the great uncle of Abraham S. Bo- Bowen, Bowman, 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 like the cards. Great, great uncle. A great, great uncle who founded A. Smith Bowen Distillery. Colonel John, Colonel John J. Bowman was a Virginia militia you officer drink some more of that. in the American Revolutionary War and the first military commander and governor of Kentucky County. We hand select some of the oldest barrels in the warehouse to produce a single barrel bourbon. With hints of toffee, I did taste that. Leather, well, I don't know if that's what we should be talking about. Figs and almonds. The Sazerac Company is the company that is uh, producing this. The classification is straight bourbon. This is, again, 100 proof. Mash bill is undisclosed, and there is no age statement rumored to be about 8 to 10 years. Uh, Man, that was a kick. 
Mm, yeah, that, we're going to have to see if that smooths out over time. It was a, it was a little bit uh, heavy on the kick. I, I, good, good flavor, though. And it does have a flavor. And, you know, I'm not getting an afterbite. Are you getting an afterbite into it? No. No, no so got that's a good that's, finish. Got a good finish. All right. Well, make sure you stay through the show to see if we give it a thumbs up or thumbs down by Mike Roday and myself. We do not have Mark in studio, so the Mark mumbles is going to be read by our, our one and only Mike Corday. I can't wait to see what the happens there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. With our first whiskey segment, Tasting Complete, let's move on to our feature segment. Today we have Gwen Way joining the show. She's an expert in cybersecurity during the day and a game board geek in the evenings, producer of Tech Time Radio and our gadgets and gear gal. Let's get ready to start our commercial video stream to start this next segment. What's new in our gadgets and gear? All right, Gwen, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. All right. Okay. Well, we had a subject pop up last night during our production meeting, and I want to talk to you about it before we get on to our gadget of the month. And the gadget of the month, it kind of reminds me of the uh, Clark uh, Griswold saying where it kind of is over and over and over again, kind of like when you uh, get the uh, jelly of the month club. So I kind of like some of the aspects of this in our gadget and gear, but you work for a cybersecurity company, right? I sure do. Um, and, uh, there's a lot going on right now, let me tell you. There is. And so we were specifically talking about last night, essentially a large uh, airplane company, which is called Boeing, <laughs> the United States' largest aerospace company that we have, had a breach of data and they decided not to pay the ransomware. Can you explain a little bit about this? We always say that it's not good to pay the ransomware. A lot of the times I get... Uh, called in, or if you get called in, or and I'm sure Nick gets called in, that's normally the question, do I pay the ransomware, do I not pay the ransomware? Boeing was pretty aggressive about this and, and said, we're not going to pay the ransomware. And, and tell us a little bit about the story, Kenya. That is definitely the way to go. Uh, so the biggest problem that you have when you pay a ransom is that you then go on the list of people who paid their ransom. Suddenly, everybody's hitting you up because they know that they can get money out of you. Um Definitely not a good look. So there, there are three basic things that we recommend. Uh, number one, whether you're a mom and pop or a big enterprise like Boeing, make sure that your backups are set up and make sure to check them regularly. Okay. Number two, have an incident response plan in place. Uh, at this point in this environment, uh, there is no guarantee that you won't be hacked. In fact, there's almost a guarantee that you will one way or the other. And knowing what the plan of attack or the plan of response is prior to getting attacked makes a world of difference in the final outcome. Okay. And then the third thing to keep in mind is do not pay that ransom. Don't get on that list. Once you're on the list of somebody who pays, you're just going to be hit over and over and over again. Okay, so they chose, yeah, so they chose not to pay, yep. and essentially they decided to post a bunch of information out there. And what it ended up becoming was absolutely nonsense data, yep. right? So it was like IT backups, IT procedures, stuff that were pretty insignificant to the Boeing aerospace industry itself. Uh, I, I'm seeing more and more of a trend when people are actually breaking into these companies now, where they'll pretend like they have a lot of sensitive okay. data. And they'll, they'll act as if, oh, we have you here. Here, let me show you the, the most juiciest part that I can. And a lot of the times, the data that they have is pretty insignificant. So it's is this a trend you guys are seeing too? Or, or is this just something that I'm seeing out there? Oh, no, that's that's very legitimate. It's it's kind of like the old 90s mover ha movie Hackers, uh, where the dude gets into the Gibson and steals the trash files. Well, in that case, it actually came to something, but nine times out of 10, your trash files are just that. They're trash. They're garbage. They're not going to actually give hackers anything that they can get money for. All right. Okay. There you go. That was an interesting topic. Okay. Now, let's get on to the why uh, you're here, the best part of the show, and in my opinion, the gadgets and gear segment, the segment that saves me no money that Gwen's doing it now than when I used to do it, but that's okay. It's a much better done. Uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, a specific item today that's a little bit different. We we, we were off uh, the mark where last uh, time we spoke, we did not have a Kickstarter. And we're not going Kickstarter again. We're yeah. trying to get some in for the holidays, so you don't have to do a Kickstarter now and get it three holidays from now. So tell us, what are we looking at for your recommended gadget and gear? 
Well, this is super exciting because it's not one gadget. It's not one piece of gear. It's multiple. Uh, what we're looking at is a subscription box called Brio Box. It's B-R-E-O Box. Okay. And what it is is a chunk of gadgets, at least $300 for the value per box, that ships out seasonally. Uh, this is something you can get for yourself if you really like gadgets or, you know, if Mrs. Mom is looking for a present, you can also give this as a gift. All right. So explain these gift boxes. So is this something that comes every month? Is this something that comes quarterly? Is it comes once a year? I did this for a whiskey uh, club once and oh, yeah. I was I was supposed to get stuff every month and it ended up being every quarter. And by the time I got it, I was like, yeah, it was, it was just kind of OK. So explain what's in the box. How so, often do we get this and, and, and what's the cost? This is a quarterly box. Okay. Um, We'll, we'll start with that and then we'll also start with the cost because I think those are two very important things to get out of the way. So you will get this once every three months. Okay. If you buy an individual box, either for yourself or for somebody as a gift, it's $159 per box and it will auto renew. If okay. you decide to pay for a full year, you actually get that full year for $579 which means you're saving about 85 bucks. I think it's actually 87 to be exact. Okay. All right. So you get it quarterly. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty good amount. Now what yeah. you're, so you're spending a uh, buck 50 on these boxes, right? How yeah. much is the value in these boxes that you're getting? I saw some of the items. And so again, the website that the people can go to, to order these is what's that website again is Brio box, it's right? Brio box.com. Exactly. So B R E O B O X.com. Okay. So tell me what, what's the value in, in these items that you get? So it's a minimum of about $300 per box. Okay. And it can be any kinds of things like I've seen drones. Uh, we, we actually talked briefly last night about the Ember Cup, which was another contender for being talked about today. It's a really cool smart mug that stays warm. They handed those out last year in one of the boxes. So you can get things like that. Uh, sometimes you'll get like something for the house, an air purifier, for example. It's just little bits and pieces of tech gadgetry that is fun, and every box has its own theme. Okay, so this is this. I, this, I, this, I, re, I remain I remain unmoved by this. <laughs> you're, you're not excited about this, or you're excited no, about so it? No, so far so far I've heard I'm going to pay a lot of money for stuff that I don't know what I'm getting that could be like a like a let's make a deal deal. Well, I think that I think that's kind of the idea about these type of. Mystery boxes, yeah, I've right? seen I've seen all kinds of these. So I, I I'm was not at, really a fan of mystery I boxes. Pax. I was at PAX, right? And they had literally this whole wall of just themed items. And people are waiting in 40-minute lines to go in and buy a mystery box. So you, you're buying this something. Is, yeah, this is kind of like going to a conference and getting a bunch of swag. Well, I don't know. At the conference swag, though, you throw away half of it before you load it back up oh, on the uh, at suitcase, at least half. Right? Well, yeah, but I'm. Uh, this is the way I feel about this one. Okay. So, but do, do you like being surprised? So this, I guess, the attraction to this. No, I, I, if I'm paying for something, I don't want to be surprised. You don't want to be surprised. No, See, it's that's like the going. Say if yeah. I'm if I'm if I'm paying for a car, I want to know that I'm paying for the car that I'm getting. I don't okay. want to pay for like a car with two missing tires. Okay. <laughs> well, so for other people, I mean, for like me. I like seeing what is in the box. What if I got lucky and I got something that I was... See, that's my point. It's kind of like gambling. It is kind of like gambling. It is. Like, let, you it remember is. Let's Make a Deal? I don't yeah. know if you... Oh, absolutely. Monty like, Hall. Hey, yeah, Monty well, Hall, yeah. yeah. Like, you, if you have an egg in your purse, I'll give you 100 bucks. Yeah. Or, you know, you can have this. come on up this. here and I got a car over yeah, here. I have, or I I have, that's this. right. I have a car over here and then I have this box over here. You want the box? Uh, yeah. You say, or do you just want to take the car with you? Always no, take I'll, the car. You always yeah, take the no, car. I'm yeah. gonna take the box. Okay, well, you want a goat? <laughs> I'm like, okay. So uh, at so, least you get cheese. Yeah. So you, I mean, you you don't enjoy that. This or meat. <laughs> you don't enjoy that part of not knowing and then being surprised. No, really? not not if I'm paying for it. It's, okay. You know, that I don't do. Uh, this is this sort is of, addicted to me. I like this. I like. I, this I understand. Video. I understand. But for me, I'm like, no, not really. Okay. It's All like right. a surprise present to yourself every. Yeah. Quarter. That was it's like I get enough surprises without sending them to myself that I don't really need them. All right. I mean, these Last, are mostly positive at least. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so there's is there a Black Friday deal available coming on up 
for a Brio box? There are a couple of Black Friday deals. Um, okay. Right now, if you go on their website, that's BrioBox.com as a reminder, yep. uh, you can actually sign up to be notified about the Black Friday deals. Uh, from memory, what they did last year was about a week before they started sending you messages saying, these are what you can expect and these are the deals that you can expect. Okay. Uh, you also have the opportunity, usually around Black Friday, to buy some of their past boxes. So if you're looking through some of their boxes, you look at the summer box, and they're like, gee, I really want that water bottle. I want that Key Smart iPro. Buy the summer box. All right, there you go. All right, okay. Yeah. All right, Gwen. Are thank the, you. Are the pass boxes cheaper than the? Yeah, they're, 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 aren't they? Aren't they about twenty five dollars cheaper? They're they're usually between twenty five and fifty cheaper, depending yeah. on which one you go for. Yeah, I'm still not going to do it. Okay. I, I just <laughs> want to All right, great. Thanks. You so much. All right, Gwen. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, and bye, Gwen. Happy Thanksgiving for those uh, listeners out there. That's right. Okay. Well, that ends our segment, Gadgets and Gear with Gwen Way. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. So now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side, as we will be doing so during the break. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. See you in a few minutes. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, collected writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon, the book repository, and more. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're looking all the way back to November 12th, 2000. Microsoft declares tablets are the future. In the first year as Microsoft Corporation's chief software architect, Bill Gates announced at the annual State of the Industry to a crowd of more than 12,000 individuals at the Comdex Fall 2000 attendee list at the MGM Grand Arena that essentially the tablet PC will represent the next major evolution in PC design and functionality. However, the tablet PC initiative never really took off, and it wasn't until Apple introduced the iPad in 2010, 10 years later, that tablet, that tablet computing became widely adopted. Likely the, le the lesson that Microsoft learned from this early effort led to Microsoft manufacturing its own hardware later in the brand they call Surface Tablets, starting in the late 2010s, mimicking the model of the Apple that was proven successful. Now, you have a, yourself a Surface over there, as yeah. a matter of fact. Yep. How's your tablet doing? I, you know, I enjoy it's both features. Okay. You know, I like having the features of the tablet where I can touch screen scroll and yep. with my with the touch screen. And then I have, you know, of course the keyboard and I don't have my pen. My pen fell off, my stylus fell uh -oh. off somewhere. I gotta find my stylus. Yeah, find but you know, yeah. having having it work as a regular computer. And so Surface really did well. The first tablet that uh, Bill tried to push uh, was a little too early by ten years. Let me just tell you, he, well, he yeah, they they did not have the technology. It, that's 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 the way it is with 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 people. Yeah, you know, it, we're not ready for right? certain. It things. takes a yeah. while to. I mean, everybody was going to be buying. Uh, Amazon was going to be the bookstore place of the the future, right? And it took everybody like fifteen years to adopt buying books on there, let alone buying all the rest of the items that were there. So all right, well, Amazon's like. We're now everywhere. we all buy it, and, and we don't know what happens if the Amazon delivery driver doesn't hit our driveway each and every day. So there you go. That was This Week in Technology. Have you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history? With over 107 weekly broadcasts spanning for three-plus years, video podcasts and blog information, you can visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us live all the time. Gwen's on there, so if you want to ask Gwen about a gadget, you can do that or ask us technology information. We're going to take a commercial break now. When we return, we have the Mark's Mumble Whiskey Review and our technology fail of the week. See you after the break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. 
the segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. I don't know where Mark finds his stuff, but he needs a new source. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> he? He is always so excited when he finds this stuff, too. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Today is November the 14th. Okay. And uh, according to Mark's Mumble, it is National Family PJ Day. National Family PJ Day. Yeah, now, as in pajamas. He, and he actually has it written up like pajamas and jammies. Yes, and, this day it, reminds <laughs> us that the real comfort lies in spending time with our family as, all, as we all rock our matching PJs. Pajamas, lovingly known as PJs or jammies, are the ultimate comfort wear. <laughs> National Family PJ Day encourages all Americans to pull their favorite jammies out of the closet and lounge with their families. All right, so let, me, so let me just tell you this. It's like w- walking into Walmart and seeing people in their jammies. I, I just, you know, that... And it's pretty, isn't that pretty I, disturbing? I, I Actually, walking into Walmart I'm and just, seeing people in Walmart, the way they dress, that alone I, is alarming. I don't know why, I, you know, why we tolerate some of the stuff that we tolerate. Okay. But, you know, I... I, I Have you ever lounged around I, with your kids in, in pajamas? No, I don't do pajamas. Okay, you don't do pajamas. No. Uh, is your clothes are on or clothes are off? That's basically it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's you know, I, I, I'm not. You you probably have the footy pajamas where you can no, just walk around on a carpet and shock people. That's, no, uh, no, I don't, don't have I, one of those no, with the, with no, the back door. I, I'm not a big pajama guy myself either. Okay, maybe maybe during the holidays, like Christmas morning, I, I will wake up and my wife will buy pajamas for everybody, and my boys love it. But we we I grew up with two boys. My two boys and I never lounged around in pajamas. No, we never lounged in pa- No, never. Now, my youngest son never wears jeans, and he always has got, like, sweatpants on, but that's now, a little yeah, different. That's than, a little, you know, that's... That's a little bit different. That's, that's like jammies. <laughs> is that like jammies? Does yeah. that count with sweatpants as jammies? I, I think so, yeah. Okay, all right, well, okay. Because if you're not sweating in them... Yeah? What are you doing? Okay, okay, all right, okay, here you go. Is, anyway, tell us about uh, tell the whiskey now. As we move, as we move from... <laughs> PJs. <laughs> Who knew we were going to spend four minutes on a PJ uh, segment? Sh- I don't know. <laughs> John J. Bowman Single Barrel. Yes, it's a stretch. Currently, the company doesn't produce their own whiskey distillate, does not disclose who they source it from. It is believed the new make they use originates from Buffalo Trace and is their number one mash bill. John J. Bowman Single Barrel is triple distilled. It's unclear how many times a Smith Bowman redistills its uh, through their unique copper still, but it is rumored to be twice distilled at Buffalo Trace and once at A. Smith Bowman. The company then ages the whiskey on site in Virginia. The whiskey has been described as being more mellow and easygoing than other bourbons. Mark thinks that this would be the perfect one for Nathan while he's out, as he tends to like the basic stuff as long as it has a cork. <laughs> Wow. Which, uh, that's true. That is true. But but we were just saying, this is pretty good before the break when we came back. I'm enjoying this a lot. As it, as it, as it breathes a little bit, it, 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 it loses that harsh. This is my jam. Mark knows me really well. Well, yeah, we, your jam is cheap. Okay. <laughs> this whiskey will not make it to Mark's shelf again. Oh, wow. It's not bad, but just nothing special for the price. Okay. All I right. mean, it, I like it. It's, it's, it's got a very nice flavor and. Um, I don't actually taste any of that. Sit, it has to sit. It has Does. to sit out a little bit before needs to you air. start. Yeah, before you start sipping on it. All right. Well, Mark, thanks for that. Mumble. Unless you like the, unless you like the bite at the very beginning. Then. Yeah, we thank Mark for the mumble. Of course, whiskey and technology is such a great pairing. Oh no, just like the pairing of turkey and gravy for a Thanksgiving a meal. <laughs> right? I mean, can you have turkey you're, without you're, the gravy? Yes, you can. Wow, you're really? so predictable. Oh, there you go. Well, just wait till next week's. We got can't pumpkin, wait. pumpkin pie and uh, whipped cream. All right, here we go. Now let's get ready for our technology fail of the week. Brought to you by Elite Executive Services, technology experts to help you out of a technology fail. Stop yawning. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right, this technology fail comes to us from Apple. A man orders an iPhone 15 Pro from Apple and instead gets an Android copy of a phone. A man ordered an iPhone Pro 15 
got a nasty surprise in the mail, a fairly convincing Android-based copy of the iPhone. Ed, who is the COO for the cloud software provider at work from Syria, England, ordered the phone directly from Apple's website with legitimate tracking all the way and confirmation emails from both Apple and DPD. But once the package arrived, something was off. Indeed, the phone looked like one that Ed had ordered, the iPhone 15 Pro in a natural titanium with 256 gigabytes of RAM, and the packaging appeared genuine. But on closer inspection, it became obvious that the device was actually an Android phone running a software skin that mimics Apple's iOS user interface. Numerous details gave the scam away. The phone had a screen protector on the phone itself. Apple's iPhones never come with a protector. Those cost an additional $39 to get, let me tell you. So mm-hmm. its to, its display had a noticeable chin at the bottom. Essentially, their glass covers the whole uh, face of it, so it doesn't have a plastic part at the bottom. And it came with several apps already loaded, including Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Which, again, is something that Apple never does. So first time you open an Apple iPhone, it asks you for your name, it asks you for your iCloud information, and you have to configure it. Ed said that, that, that Apple has been very accommodating so far because he reached out to them, though the issue hasn't been resolved yet. Ed may not be the only person that's a victim of this scam. A recent TikTok uh, user described a very similar issue with an Android fake coming in the mail instead of the legitimate ordered iPhone I. 15 Pro Max. So where are these coming from? So these are coming from direct order from Apple's site. So that means there's a, Do, a does there's Apple a plug. use franchises? Well, they use fulfillment centers across the globe. So you have a fulfillment center, it looks like, that has knockoff phones that are pretty high-end and pretty quick that come with an iOS uh, emulator that looks like an Apple iOS that they are sending out directly mm, from Apple some, themselves. Somebody's scraping off the top. Yeah, so uh, we reached out, and other people have reached out to get from Apple information regarding this. They are being very mums the word on this, and they're not saying they anything uh, about it. But this is not the first time that this has happened, specifically with the new Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max orders, and other people have had it. So it looks like one of their fulfillment centers has been... Uh, uh, ransacked with artificial phones. So if you order That's one, not the correct word for ransacked. Uh, well, okay, or inundated, I, I, inundated, inundated with Android device knockoff phones. If you order an iPhone 15 Pro Max, make sure it does not come with a screensaver, and make sure it is not an Android device. Well, I'm not going to order one, so okay, I don't have to go. worry about it. All right, we're going to head out to our last commercial break. When we return, we still have Mike's mesmerizing moment, brought to us by Story Coffee, and a possible, absolutely Nathan Nugget pick of the day. So sit back, raise a glass. You're listening to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, Mike, your mesmerizing moment today, we're in the holidays. Scams are all around us. Human nature has us fail all the time. Speaking of scams, is there a scam that you were close to being victimized by in the last Are you couple seriously years? asking me that question? Yeah, yeah. Because I got scammed the other day. I know. So let's talk about That's, that. <laughs> I, I kind of knew that, but let, let, let's talk a little bit about that. So this is happening all the time. And even the best prepared people can get scammed if they're not paying attention. If they're not paying attention or they're tired or frustrated our, our emotional state has a lot to do with how we respond to some of these items uh, because they rely on that. This is this it's just continual beating on the door until somebody answers it. So, hey, so let's kind of go through your so what, happened? What, what happened with me as I went down to, to Seattle. Yep. And as you know, when you go on down into the city, you yep. have to pay for parking and you can pay for they have all these apps and things where you can pay all over the place. So I pull into this parking spot, and they have a big sign up there, and it says, download the app. Uh, So I'm 
not I'm not thinking about it. I'm I'm rushed. I got to get to where I'm going. I'm I'm a little tired because it was after the show. Yep. So I go to this website, and it automatically has me start putting in information. And because I'm not paying attention, I start putting in information. And I even put my card information in there because I'm my brain is telling me this is the app for the parking. And then as soon as I hit, you know, done, this whole f- different thing shows up. Mm-hmm. You know, I had signed up for some online game and got charged 40 bucks. Got charged 40 bucks for it. And had to go and get my card changed out. Had to go to my bank and say, hey, you know, I got scammed. I need to I need to make sure that this charge doesn't go through and I get a new card. And did you actually scan like a QR code for that to start out the, the scam or did you I think uh, type I, I in? think there was a QR code yep. on the board. Yep. That that I over to the scanned. right of it. And then because because of these things are happening so quickly and your state of emotional being or your state of being is such that it is you can't human beings aren't designed to be constantly on alert yeah but our our modern system our modern society has put us in these positions where we're always on alert for something and that gets exhausting and we start missing cues and we start missing things so it's easy for us to get sidetracked when we're trying to do something as simple as paying for a parking a uh, lot yep. that that something happened. So what what actually had happened was the QR code on the board, and I don't know if it was something that was stuck on there after the fact, yep. but it it mimicked the pay the pay yep. app. Yep, and it was instead it was it was an advertisement for this for this gaming company. So, uh, yeah, I mean it. This happens to. This is why. This is why. This is why. I get so frustrated with some of this technology that we talk about quite a bit. Is because it's it's literally we the the amount of input that we're dealing with on a daily basis is so much more than what it used to be when I was younger and even the even the generations that came before us. We didn't have this much input that was constantly keeping us on guard and exhausting us. Well, I'm glad that you got it taken care of. Yeah, it was just it was a pain in the neck because I knew it immediately. Uh, it did too. Soon, I was like, oh crap! You did, I did, you're like, oh, uh, okay, all right. Now let's head on. That to, wasn't the word I used. I know it, it, was, was, a, it was a little bit co- well, more we're colorful. Gonna to, we're, we're gonna have to dump a lot of those words. All right, let's get ready for our <laughs> nugget of the week. Nugget of the week. All right, our nugget of the week. We're gonna be talking about. Don't get arced out. Now, we're actually, this is a, a Nathan Nugget, because I'm actually exploring soundbar technology for the holiday shopping season for myself well, that's personally. That's good, because I need to get a new soundbar. Okay, so let's talk about it. So there's a whole bunch of different uh, options. You can use digital optical, which is a, a wire that comes with a red laser in it to hook up your audio from your television to your sound bars. Very old technology. Yeah, my old one had that feature and it didn't work. Uh, it doesn't work in, into most of the new televisions that are coming on, out now. I have that on my house. And what happens is every single time I'm on my direct TV receiver, uh, every time somebody talks, it's about two seconds until you actually hear it come on out. They cannot keep up with that technology. So now they have HDMI ARC and HDMI E. ARC. So let's talk. I had both. Okay, so let's talk about that. So HDMI ARC is an older technology. It allows you to plug just a standard HDMI cable, nothing special. You plug it from your television into your soundbar, and then your soundbar gets the signal because HDMI can do both video and signal at the same time, Mm -hmm. and it broadcasts across the system. Now, HDMI ARC is an old technology. It's not the newer technology. So it has some limitations on what it can actually support. <coughs> it can essentially support uh, <coughs> 7 one channels, excuse me, uh, digital DTS, Atmos, Atmos Digital Plus, but it cannot get to the DTSX, HDMI arc, or other high-end individual items. What you need to look for when you're getting your receiver is the EARC device, HDMI E for extended ARC. This allows you the best in Dolby Atmos, uh, gives you all your digital plus services, and works with all the streaming services that are available out there right now. 
Whether you use wireless or wired, the key aspect from your television is the HDMI E ARC. All right, now let's move to our pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, we got the uh, John J. Bowman single barrel, 100 proof, 55 bucks. Thumbs up. Thumbs up from Mike. Thumbs up from Nathan. I know Mark won't be too happy with us, but I thought it was a very smooth and enjoyable selection of whiskey. Now, remember, we look forward to seeing you next week, and the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.